All right, so you have hired an active manager. You're not going to invest in an index fund, but you want to make sure that your manager truly is active. You don't want to pay those active management fees only to find out that your manager is a closet indexer. So we talked about active share. You can check that out in this video. Today, we're going to talk about tracking error, uh, sometimes called active risk. Uh, as a refresher, the active share was a way of measuring how different the portfolio weights are compared to the benchmark weights. We're actually looking at the holdings in the portfolio with tracking error. We're gonna look at how different the returns end up being. So you could have a portfolio that has weights that are very different from the benchmark, but ends up performing in a very similar way to the benchmark. So you can see how these measures uh, measure different things. Now, fortunately, if you look online, you're gonna see two different calculations for tracking error. I put them both here. Now, if you need to pause this video, please do. People have been complaining that there's just not enough math in here. So today we're gonna to do a little bit of math on the top formula with the quotation marks in it. If you look at here, what we're looking at, are we looking at the differences between the portfolio's return and the benchmark returns at each period and comparing that to the average difference between the portfolio return and the benchmark return. So we wanna understand how those deviations are changing. We're in the second one, we are looking at how the portfolio return compares to the benchmark return. So it doesn't matter if it's the same difference period by period, it's just how they how they vary. Those are the two differences there. Hopefully that makes sense. Pause it if you need to. Also note that we are, of course, squaring returns here uh, and then taking the square root of it. So what that does for us is just saying, hey, if we have uh, outperformance versus underperformance, we outperform by 50 basis points, we underperform by 50 basis points, we're gonna treat those the same. So that's what the squaring and square root does for us here. Now. Um, so to understand the differences between these two calculations, I've contrived some examples here. We're going to look at five different portfolios. One matches the benchmark perfectly period after period, uh, has 0% differences in return. One underperforms by exactly five basis points. So this would be like an index fund. So those five basis points would account for fees and transaction costs. We're going to have a portfolio that every single period outperforms the benchmark by 150 basis points one that underperforms every period by 150 basis points, and then finally a portfolio that outperforms one period by 150, then underperforms by 150, outperforms, and it just goes back and forth, up and down. So this gives us some sense of deviation in the returns for five different portfolios. And those returns would look something like this. Again, pause it if you need to, but these different portfolios follow the pattern that I just described on the previous slide. Uh, if we were to graph the cumulative returns of these portfolios, we would see this, of course, we would see this portfolio that outperforms by 150 basis points uh, every every period, having the best performance there with that yellowish line. Uh, and we would see the portfolio that underperforms by 150 basis points doing poorly relative to the other portfolios. That's that blue line. And the others match up pretty well. So clearly the benchmark is gonna match the one that, match it, that matches the portfolio exactly. Um, the portfolio that underperforms by five basis points is going to slightly trail. We can see that there. And of course, we have this one that deviates and it ultimately ends up uh, tracking very well, very closely to the portfolio, despite these wild deviations. OK, so, so what we want to do is now do these calculations. So if we do that first calculation where we're measuring how much the deviations vary, uh, we get this. Right. So we get for portfolios one, two, three, four. Uh, there's zero tracking here. So what this is telling us is that that consistent five basis points or consistent 150 basis points or consistent negative 150 basis points, this is telling us that the tracking error is zero, that the, that the difference between the benchmark and the portfolio, that difference doesn't change. Okay, that's, that's what this is telling us. Whereas the one where the difference goes up by 150, down by 150, that this is changing, right? So that with this compounding effect here, we get... Uh, a tracking year of 1.54%. Now, interestingly, if you look at the returns, the differences are, are going to be the largest in portfolios three and four, but it's showing us 0% tracking year. Now, if we do the other calculation, this is what we get. And this is kind of what our intuition would tell us. So we, we get five basis points of tracking year with the one that is underperforming by five basis points. Makes sense. And then for the other three, we get exactly 150, which is how much they deviated period by period. Again, the direction doesn't matter because we are squaring the returns and then taking the square root of, of those differences. So uh, again, this is kind of the measure that uh, makes intuitive sense to me. 
Uh, this is often called active risk uh, instead of tracking error. At least that's my impression. Also, this is kind of the risk that I think about when you're looking at traffic uh, tracking error looking forward, so predicted active risk. These are the kind of measures that, that we're expecting. Also, keep in mind that when you have a you know a tracking error of, of 150, it doesn't tell you anything about the direction. So you could be that could result in dramatic outperformance, dramatic underperformance, or ultimately very similar returns to the benchmark. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy that. Next time we're going to talk about is, is some research where we're combining both active share and tracking error to make uh, or, to, or to learn something about future returns and what, what history has shown us in that regard. But that'll be a video uh, next week. So anyway, hope you enjoy that. Thanks so much for listening.